Hello Integrated Science 1. This is a video for the introduction to microscope activity that was missed by A period because of the snow day. So this is mainly geared towards A period, but this could be utilized by anyone in Integrated Science 1 if you're looking for a little bit of a refresher on the parts and use of a microscope. So the microscopes are all in the back left hand corner of the lab in a cabinets labeled microscopes. And I'll actually open up one of the cabinets here and you can see that each microscope has a particular number associated with it as far as where they are located and you can actually very easily identify the spot with a number and the microscope with the accompanying matching number. Okay, so now for removing the microscope from the cabinets. So when you go to the cabinet to get your microscope, first thing you want to do is make sure to anything that might be in the way that you could possibly trip over and cause you to damage the microscope. When you go to access your microscope, you'll actually want to grab it by the arm, which should be facing out towards you, with the cover still on the microscope, and very carefully remove it from the shelf, and then put your other arm underneath the base, hand, sorry, other hand underneath the base, and then you want to make sure to keep the microscope very close to your body so that you have a very nice steady hold on the microscope, and then go to your particular lab station, when you get your lab station over, you can put it down on the lab bench and you'll be ready to begin with the use of the microscope. Okay, so now we're going to go really quickly, just take a quick tour of the different parts of the microscope. This is in reference to part one in the uh, packet for the activity here. So the first one on the table is the eyepiece. The eyepiece is this part. The eyepiece magnification is actually listed for you on the eyepiece. In this case, the magnification says 10 times. The next thing on there is scanning power. Scanning power is the smallest of all of the objective lenses, and it's colored in this case with a red. And so that is scanning power, right, or that's the scanning power objective right there. The arm is this part right here, um, which we mentioned before. And then you have the stage with the stage clips. The stage is this thing right here. It's this big black square. And then the stage clips are on the stage. They are these metal things right here, like so. And then you have the course adjustment is going to be the large knob here, which you can see moves the stage like so. And then the fine adjustment is going to be this one right here. And the fine adjustment does the same thing as the course adjustment except it doesn't move the stage as much. So the course adjustment moves the stage a lot in very small amounts of turning, and the fine adjustment moves the stage very small amounts. The lamp is right here. There's a switch on one part of the base. It turns the lamp on, like so. The nose piece is this thing right here, which holds all three objective lenses. The red one, the scanning, the yellow one, the low power, and the blue one, or the high power. The scanning, as we mentioned before, has a magnification of four times. The low power, or the yellow one, has a magnification of 10 times. The high power, or the blue one, has a magnification of uh, 40 times. The base is this thing right here. That's the base. The diaphragm, I'm going to change your angle of the camera here in a second and give you a better view of the diaphragm, but the adjustment for the diaphragm to change it is a little thing right here. It's just a little disc that you can move like so. And I'll show you what that's actually doing when we take a look at underneath the stage. Okay, so now a closer look at the diaphragm, which is actually hidden underneath the stage. And so if we turn our lamp on, the diaphragm essentially is this disc that you can turn and rotate like so. I'll show you exactly what that's doing here in just a second. Um, I apologize, this might make you a little seasick because I'll have to be moving the camera by hand and, and probably a little shaky. All right. Anyway, so if we look underneath our stage, what we'll see here is the diaphragm. And so if we focus in a little bit there, we can see that as we turn the diaphragm, we're changing the opening in which the light is passing through. Let me try to get this a little bit better into focus. So you can see how it's what it's actually doing. Now I'll show you what this does on the other side, on top of the stage, and how this actually affects what you might be looking at. 
Okay, so if we look at our opening in the middle of the stage where the light passes through, and if we make some adjustments to the diaphragm, which you'll be able to hear. Okay, I think that gives you a good sense of it. Hopefully that'll give you everything you need to know about the diaphragm. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to make a wet mount. There's a couple things we need to make sure that this does gets done correctly. We're going to need a dropper with water in it, dropper bottle with water in it, a slide, which is a glass uh, rectangular uh, shape, and then also our cover slip, which is usually plastic or it can be glass and it's just a square thing. And we'll need something that we're going to put on our cover slip. In this case, we are going to take just a very small piece of string like so, and just put that on the middle of our slide. And then we're going to take our dropper bottle and just put, usually one drop of water is enough, right on the object. I'm going to put two, but usually one is enough. And then we want to take our cover slip and we want to cover the object. Essentially we want to sandwich the water and the object that we're going to be looking at with the cover slip. So we want to do this by approaching at about a 45 degree angle of our object, making sure to touch the water and it will spread out. And as we do that, we'll then let it fall into place. And then we look over the top to see if there's any air bubbles. And if there is, we just gently push on the cover slip with our finger in order to make sure all the air bubbles go away. Okay, so this is the view of our slide, our prepared slide, with the cover slip on top, the string in between, the water in between, the cover slip, and the slide. And so this is what we'll go ahead and put on the uh, microscope. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to look at your prepared slide, which we have here, with our cover slip and our string. So we want to put it on the stage. First thing we do is make sure our stage is as far down as it will go using the coarse focus is the large knob. We want to make sure that we have it on the scanning objective, which is the smallest one, the red one. And then we take our clips, move them off to the side. Make sure that our cover slip, or our object that we're looking at, is actually right over the opening. Turn the lamp on, and we should see our object in the light. We want to make sure it's right in the center of that circle. Go ahead and put our stage clip on top, and adjust as needed in order to make sure the object stays in the middle. While you're under scanning focus, you're going to look in your eyepiece and get your object in focus using the coarse focus. And there we go. And then get your object by moving the slide into the center of your circle, into your view. Once you have it in focus, then you're going to move to the next highest power, which will be low power, the yellow one. Once you're in low power, you'll only use the fine adjustment to get it back into focus. It shouldn't take very much at all, just a little wiggle back and forth to get your object back into focus. And once your object is in focus under low power, then you're going to move to the next highest power, which will be high power, or the blue one. And so when you're there, you're only going to want to make sure you use the fine adjustment in order to get the object in focus. Never use the coarse focus under low or high power, only the fine. So we use this to get our object back in focus, always making sure that we keep our object in the center of our view whenever we're looking at it through the eyepiece. And there it is. Fortunately, I can't show you because I don't have an attachment to show you what it looks like, but you'll get plenty of opportunity in the near future to practice doing this. Main thing to keep in mind is you always start off scanning, adjust to get it in focus with the course under scanning, get the object in the middle of your view, move to low power, use the fine to get it back in focus, keep it in the center, move to high, and use the fine to get it back in focus, and keep it in the center. And that's all you got to remember in order to be, make sure to look at something correctly.